but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to all the ends of the earth. Look at your neighbor and say, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seen. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the word. Pray for the spirit to speak to us in new ways today. That we will not put new wine into old wine skins. That we will receive your message today with a changed mind, changed heart. And go and tell our testimony because you have been good to us. That somebody might be saved. The word says that Paul planted the polished water, but you reap the increase. Let there be a great harvest of salvation and worship in this experience today. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. See the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers the testimony of every believer. You cannot have a testimony with first being tested. The testimony is simply to tell the truth about what the Lord has done for you. Many people struggle with the idea of telling the testimony because they are afraid of how they will be judged where God has brought us from. But if we're all honest, Jesus had to reach way down to get every last one of us. Amen. It may not have been the same problem or the same predicament, but we all have needed the Lord to show up in a major way in our lives. Amen. And because Amen. he has done that over and over again, we ought to have more than enough reasons to testify and to tell our testimony. Yes. Testimony is defined as the administration of justice. It is the oral or written declaration of witnesses that were primary to the means of proof. In other words, if God has done something for you, more than likely he hasn't done it in secret. And others ought to be able to tell where God has brought you from. If we're being true to the word testimony, many people could say this man was once blind. But now he can see. Yes. If they are honest and they are telling the truth about what the Lord has done, they can proclaim that there is a difference uh, in how you are now than when you were back then. Uh, anybody remember how they were back then? Uh, anybody that got anybody around us now that knew us back then that can tell that there's a difference in our life? We got a new walk. We have a new attitude. There's a change in our way of thinking. There is a change in our actions and the way that we carry ourselves. Those people around us then and now will be able to affirm our testimony. What distinguishes a false witness from a true witness? Uh, surely nobody stands up and says, well, I'm getting ready to tell some lies uh, on the Lord. And nobody would be as bold to stand forward and say that they're going to tell a untruth about what God has done. So we don't want to be able to expect to find the difference between a false witness uh, and a true witness by the disclaimer of the one uh, who is telling the testimony. And Jesus said that you will know a tree by the fruit in Bears. And so by many of us telling our testimony, we're really not trying to eat our own fruit. We're really sowing seeds so that when we reap a harvest, the harvest will not be on our behalf, but it'll be on the behalf of the kingdom. In other words, a true witness will tell what the Lord has done. A true witness is one who maintains a desire to please God by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The church say amen. amen. God wants the church to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And in this empowerment, he wants us to share our testimony. Every believer has a testimony. If we have a testimony, then we should be motivated to testify. You ought to want to, to tell somebody about what the Lord has done for you. If you get a new house and you get a new car, you can't help but, but to pick up the phone and tell somebody. But a relationship with God is deeper than that house or that car. You have a new experience. You got a new attitude. You got a new walk. And you ought to be able to tell somebody about how that change was made. Motivation is defined as inducement, endowed to act, and many believers lack the necessary motivation to share the gospel. We are so happy today that God is blessing us beyond measure. We're so happy today that we are not in early retirement. There are too many churches today that are in early retirement. Early retirement is not an option for the Christian church. The Holy Spirit keeps us working on God's behalf. The Holy Spirit empowers the church to share the gospel until 
Jesus comes back. The birth of the early church is recorded in the book of Acts. The book is titled in my Bible, The Acts of the Apostles, but if you read a little bit closer, it really is the Acts of God. God is working in the beginning stages of the church, in the emphasis stages where the church is being born. God is present. He is speaking through his son Jesus in chapter 1, and then after Jesus ascends, he speaks through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit shows up later in chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost means 50, which means this was 50 days after the resurrection of Christ. Those who Jesus Christ is going to endow, they were going to receive power, and they have to wait on God. Old folks used to call it tarrying, waiting on God for the anointing of the Spirit. It is the great condition of spiritual blessing and the fullness of power. Those who Jesus Christ employs as his witnesses, he will qualify for a better, by a better spirit than their own. This is the Holy Spirit, which is God's representative. God has an unlimited supply of Holy Ghost power. Power is the rate in which energy is used. How many of you know about Duke Power or SCENG or perhaps uh, you are on Piedmont Electric and Gas? Regardless uh, of who your provider is uh, of power, there's a relationship between energy and power. A lot of folks have energy uh, to do something, but they really don't have the power uh, that they really need. Uh, it, it takes uh, a certain amount of energy uh, to, to even get up for the task but it takes power to be effective. And a lot of us we just say, well, I don't have the energy to do it. But what we really need is some power to do what we need to do. In other words, if you want a cookout, you can't have a cookout just by setting the meat on top of a match. The match provides energy in order to light a fire, but it's not enough power to have you a good grill hamburger or some ribs. Amen. Somebody is hungry right now, or a nice charbroiled steak. You need enough power in order to get the job done. Does anybody out there want to have some power? We have a God that provides an unlimited supply of power for us because he wants us to testify and tell our testimony. We need to be able to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So somebody here is asking the question today, how do we access the power of the Holy Spirit? There are three ways that we can do this. And the first is we have to talk to Jesus. Touch a neighbor and say, talk to Jesus. Old folks had a song that says, have a little talk talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He will fear, hear your faintest cry and answer by and by. When you hear a little prayer wheel turning there, it's a little fire burning and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Verse 6 teaches us that when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, at this time are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They had enough courage to ask Jesus for what they were looking for. The word ask is meaning to request urgently. It means to beg. And many of us remember that song by the temptation that said, I ain't too proud to beg, sweet darling. Those who are a little bit younger remember Remember, TLC had a song that said, Ain't Too Proud to Beg. And a lot of us, we claim to be Holy Ghost feel, but we got a lot of pride when it comes to asking to something from the Lord. And I am somebody who is humble enough to never to get too high for God to be smaller than me. I'm too low for me to have God look up to me. It's the other way around. I am his servant, so I need to look up to him because that's where my help comes from. So when I get you late at night, while others are watching the TV, I turn off the television and I have a little talk with Jesus. I tell him about what he has already done for me. Not that I'm giving him new information. It's just how grateful I am about what the man has done for me. And if you really want to receive some power, I got news for you. You got to have a talk with Jesus. 
they had enough courage to come to the man and ask him, was this the time that the kingdom was going to be set forth on earth? His disciples were not looking just for a heavenly kingdom. They also were looking for an earthly kingdom. Was he getting ready to overthrow the Romans? Was he getting ready to turn the world upside down? Was he getting ready to establish the throne of David among his people? And they had enough courage to talk to him for their sales. And so Jesus did not condemn their thinking, but he told them that it wasn't time for them to know that. That time was only allotted to God. Touch your neighbor say it ain't time yet. He said, when you talk with God, many of us expect an immediate answer to our prayers. But if we go to him with a sense of urgency, he will respond to what we need. Well, Grandma used to say, he may not come when you want him to come. But he's always right on time. So you got to talk to him. Tell him about how the relationship means something to you. Talk to him so that you not only will give him some news, but you also wait for him to speak back to you. you got to learn to talk to Jesus. Number two, we have to take his offering. Touch your neighbor and say, take his offering. Some people who have a lot of pride, they don't mind giving gifts, but they struggle with receiving gifts because they believe in this mentality that you can pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. But some people ain't got no boots to pull themselves up by the straps of. This is a message for us today who have a lot of pride and we don't know how to receive anything. He says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. That word receive comes from the Greek word lambano, which means to take hold of. It means to acquire. And the real benefit is to the one who initiates the giving. Many of us think God is blessing us because we're all that in a bag of chips. But I got news for you. He's blessing us because he's just that kind of God. He's just that good. He's just that merciful. He's just that benevolent and caring about us. He benefits by giving to us. This is why Jesus taught the disciples that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Taking his offering, the Holy Spirit, he is an offering from God to the church so that we will know how to testify, that we will be validated in our testimony, that the truth will spring forth back from our lips. Jesus said in the Gospel of John that the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. And in order to diminish the lying spirit that many people in the church have, giving credit to mama and daddy or to cousin and brother in them and not giving giving the credit to God, you need to look at your neighbor and say, quit lying. Many of us say, I'm not a liar. I'm an honest John, honest Abe. My nose is not like Pinocchio. I tell the truth all the time. But many of us are lying. We're just a lying. We're not testifying. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, tell us where would we be? Many people think it's their job that got them where they are today. Many people think it's their car or their clothes or their cash that's in their pockets that put them where they are today. But if it had not been for Jesus, tell us where would we be? And you need to take more than what he has ever given anyone else and take his Holy Spirit and tell somebody about what he has done. All right. The disciples were waiting, they were anticipating, they were looking forward to this appointed time in which uh, they could be witnesses. Uh, this was not about uh, personal power. In other words, no special knowledge was going to be given to them. No special uh, goodwill would be given to them. No, no personal endowment or expertise uh, was going to be shared with the disciples at this time. Uh, this was going to be the motivation uh, to carry the gospel from Jerusalem to Judea to some Maria to the uttermost parts of the world. Take his offering. Uh -huh. The third lesson, the final lesson is tell somebody he's coming back. Touch your neighbor and say, tell somebody. This is almost a forgotten pro proclamation 
of the modern day church. We talk a lot about God blessing and God giving and God forgiving and God doing good in the earth. But it almost as if we are no longer expecting Jesus to return. Look at what the instructions are in verse number 11. In verse 11 it says, Then they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who you have been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way that you have seen him going into heaven. Now, that's good news right there because God uh, did not want to take Jesus back to heaven uh, just to keep him at the right hand. He's going to send him back to proclaim his own. And I'm so glad to be one of the ones that he's coming back for. Is there anybody here that's willing to keep working until Jesus returns? Amen. So he's telling us to tell somebody. And that word come actually means to say it. Anybody ever have been on a cruise in here today? The cruise, when it gets up to a certain speed, the, the, the captain can turn off the engine because the cruise ship has enough momentum that is carrying the ship across the water. Do you know that the toughest job that a plane has and the pilot of the plane has is to get the plane off the ground? That's where all of the kinetic energy is, the energy that is needed is a certain amount of power that is needed to get a heavy object and its cargo up to the next level where it can just coast the friendly skies, sail the friendly seas, or go to the deeper depths. It's all because of the energy that it took in order to launch the operation. Many people wonder why those of us in church who tend to need a lot of motivation, a lot of inspiration, a lot of encouragement, just to get us to say amen, just to get us to say hallelujah or thank you Jesus. It's just like getting a B-52 bomber off the ground. Once you put enough energy into it to lift the heavy object and its cargo, then the plane, even as big as it is, can fly just like a hummingbird. Some of y'all are getting that a little bit later. That's why it takes a lot of Holy Ghost power in the life of a prayer warrior. Somebody who's really serious about God knows how to stay on their knees long enough not to just have power for themselves but for that jumbo jet that's sitting next to them on Sunday morning. You don't know what that person's been through. They don't have a praise like you do because they had not learned how to get lifted. And I got good news for you. As I get out of here today, God has enough power to lift the biggest burden off of your heart because Jesus said... Come unto me, all who labor and who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Anybody in here know how we get some rest? That rest comes, and not for us doing something. That rest comes in Him giving us something. And I'm talking about it. I'm preaching about it. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, He's so big, you can't get around Him. He's so high, you can't go over. He's so low, you can't go under. You gotta come in at the door. God's power is available to his people who want to do his will and be his witnesses. Anybody out there want to be a witness? You don't have to be a preacher or an apostle to have Holy Ghost power working in your life. You just got to be willing and ready to say, Lord, here I am. I'm available unto you. My will, I give to you. I do whatever you say. Use me, Lord. Then he will breathe on the day of Pentecost. Anybody out there ready for Pentecost? There is somebody in here today that knows about Holy Ghost power. He'll make you love when you don't feel like loving. He'll make you live when you don't feel like living. He'll make you pray when you don't feel like praying. I'm so glad I know him. I know I know him. I know that I know that I know him. 
he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Is there anybody here that know about the Holy Ghost power? I got to get out of here. I got to tell you the story about a little old lady who was living in the woods. She didn't have electricity in her home, but she said she wanted it. And she called the power company to get herself connected. And after they connected her, about six months went by. The power company noticed that she was only using a small amount of electricity. They called her and said, they said, maybe are you using the electricity that we gave you? She said, yes, and I'm sure I am. And they said, well, what are you using it for? The lady said, I turn it on long enough to light my lamp, and then I turn it back off. And she said, that's what I'm using it for. This lady had power, but she didn't know how to use it. And I don't want you to be like that lady. Don't be in the dark when you can have some light. I'm not talking about a little flashlight or a little lamp. I'm talking about the light of Jesus. Anybody here can walk in the light. The beautiful light. Come with a new drop of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. It is Jesus. Let us stand at our feet. Try, try Jesus.